everybody. I'm Nathan James, a courageously funny partner in crime, Tammy P.A. Hello, everybody. Thanks for calling in. Okay. And we are here on the season premiere of this delightful new show, Drive Time Radio Just Got Real. Okay, so sit back, relax, and get ready for the most outrageous conversations you've ever heard spilled out over the air. It's Tammy P.A., Nathan James. Today we're going to welcome two very special guests, Miami Sizzle founder Dwight Powell and last comic standing winner Nikki Carr, the NBC TV series that... Opens up again next Wednesday. and uh, I we think she's on the lineup next Wednesday, right? Yes. yes. Okay, give it up for Nikki Carr, everybody. <laughs> well, we've got a lot going on. And uh, it is such a privilege to be here with you. Uh, a little bit of background, uh, Tammy and I have been working together for quite some time now, very many years. Last year, Tammy and I put on the very first LGBT Pride concert at Carnegie Hall, which was a spectacular event, it opened up the most famous recital hall in the world to the LGBT community. Tammy has also been prominently featured in LGBT and mainstream events all over the United States. She's hosted Best of Out Music, New York City Black Pride, the Heritage Awards. She has performed at Caroline's. She has Enough about me. Enough about me, Nathan. Let's talk about this Caitlin chick. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the show. Nathan is a prolific writer. You've seen him all over featured in periodicals and magazines everywhere. We both good at what we do. We don't have to give a bio. We just came here to give a good show. So uh, first line of business, Nathan, tell us what you think about Caitlyn. Well, Caitlyn Jenner, as everybody knows, has made a transition in spectacular fashion from male to female. Caitlyn, previously known as Bruce Jenner, was one of the greatest athletes of the 20th century, an Olympian who won numerous gold medals in the 1976 decathlon event, and is known around the world and uh, as a public icon on such notable Venues as the Wheaties Box, as uh, endorsements for hundreds of different products from everything from soup to nuts. I remember Caitlyn as Bruce on a Wheaties Box. That's the only thing I remember Caitlyn doing personally. Now, um, Caitlyn was a reality show uh, figure. That's what I knew Bruce as. When she was Bruce, she was a reality show star. That's the only thing I remember Caitlyn doing. What Bruce doing, Caitlin is doing bigger things, I guess, because she's going to get more money now, right? Uh, yeah, well, as, as far as her docuseries, I Am Kate, uh, that's going to Five be... Five million dollars, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right, five million dollars. <laughs> uh, so, so she is going to earn more money doing shows that are based on her and her transition and coming out and so on. But last night, she was awarded the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs, which are given by the ESPN Network. ESPN had come under fire for choosing Caitlin as their recipient this year, and they defended their decision by saying that Caitlin showed tremendous bravery in transitioning when, in fact, Caitlin could have chosen not to come out at all, not to transition and gone into history as Bruce, rode off into the sunset, and nobody would have been the wiser. Uh, There is a school... So that took courage? Well, I think that the courageous aspect, what makes this an act of bravery, first of all, was that Caitlin did this in such a public manner, already having been a celebrity, that, that Caitlin could not have made this transition anywhere else but under the microscope. And any time that someone makes a transition like this in the public eye, it cannot help but to help foster the discussion and dialogue about the transgender community. Here you go acting like Caitlyn is the transgender messiah and she's saving all the transgender people. 
That is a bit. This is the thing, Nathan. And I don't know if people are going to agree with me. I don't care who agrees with me. All I'm saying is, girls have been doing work long before Caitlyn. Girls have been lobbying, marching. They have been doing all this legal work. You have so many activists in this community that you're telling me this one emasculated man on reality TV, who most people in this generation didn't know who. You have to be over almost 50 to know who Bruce Jenner was until he got with the Kardashians. Now that you're Caitlyn, you're telling me everything in the world is great for transgender people because this one person finally told the truth after 50 years? Well, no, what I'm saying is not that everything in the world is suddenly great for trans people. Of course, Caitlyn is standing on the shoulders of those who have come before. Please repeat that. Caitlyn is standing on the shoulders of those who come before. But having said that, having said wicca, that... Wicca, wicca, wicca. Please repeat that. <laughs> Caitlyn is standing on the shoulders of those who have come before. Exactly. And a lot of girls who took lashes so Caitlyn could wear lashes. And it's so funny to me that people are acting like, oh, well, we have one more person to... It doesn't... People transition every day. I know a little, a little girl who lives down the street from me. She's like 13 years old and she's living her truth. And it's brave for her because she gets on a school bus with people picking at her. She's in her formative years. When you're 65 years old, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. And especially when you don't need anything from anybody. If I was worth $100 million, I could do very well what I choose to do when I choose to do it. Caitlin could shut off her iPad, shut off her computer, and never have to deal with people again. I just don't think it's an act of bravery. I think it's an act of probably being sick and tired of lying And now you want to tell the truth And I applaud her for finally telling her truth But it's not brave when you come out When you have nothing to lose She had absolutely nothing to lose Well, in, in terms of uh, transitioning and relative safety You're right, she didn't have very much to lose Because she was already wealthy already Black famous. car, security, gated community Beverly Hills, Malibu You know, Rodeo Drive transition this is not the typical tra story of transition. However, taking all that into consideration, uh, again, most people that transition from one gender to another don't do so in the glare of the public spotlight. Your public spotlight are the people that you know. So it, it doesn't matter if you're embarrassed by one person or a million. The million that see her, she doesn't even know these people. So that's not really an issue for me. I, Caitlin doesn't care what people think. But she doesn't she, care what people think. Evidently, she does. She stopped caring what people think. Evidently, at this point in life. But at sixty-five years old, you're well into your 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 your, your, your yourself. You know yourself. You're secure with yourself, and you're rich as hell. Why should you care what anybody thinks? It's not whether Caitlyn cares what anyone thinks. But people say, "Oh, she did it in the public eye, in the eye of scrutiny." No, she chose to be in the public eye. She chose to be a reality star. She chose that. Nobody asked her to do that. She chose that. Okay. These kids don't choose to be on a school bus. These children don't choose to be homeless or whatever's going on. I just think, like I said, the runner who got his legs blown off, that Norwood guy in that Baltimore uh, uh, marathon. The Boston Marathon. That's the one that should have won that award for bravery because that's an act of bravery. Not you finally tell your truth after 50 years. Well, in total safety when you're worth a hundred million dollars and you're getting all this money for your truth? Well, coming out late, transitioning late, suggests that there has been an ongoing lifelong struggle with the, with the idea of... A lifelong of struggle or questionable character. Because it, the public didn't have to know. But the person that you share a bed with every night, they didn't even know? That's 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 another issue. That that's another issue. You're right. Thank you but, for the sound but effect. Again, that was right but on time. again, when we talk about that, when we talk about that, we also have to consider again what was society's role in causing that to be the case. Society exerts tremendous pressure on people to conform, not to come out, not to transition. People to yes, especially if you're a public figure, if you're a celebrity, it's even more so. It's even more so if you're trying to maintain a certain public image. I'm not saying Caitlin was right for deceiving his wife and family, but what I am saying is that this monster is partially society's own creation. Of course it's society, but people walk the walk every day unapologetically in their truth.
And we're talking young teenagers who are in their formative years who need friends, who need allies, who have financial situations where they might not have a place to live when they tell the truth. And they tell the truth anyway. I'm just a person. I'm big on people telling the truth. Sometimes I say stuff that I take, I take a lot of heat for, but it's still my truth. I take heat all. You know I take heat. My email looks like some people are ready to kill. I go through it. But I tell my truth because it feels good once it's out. I have nothing to remember and nothing to lie about. You, there's no way this person could be an honest person. Because every day that Chris Jenner asked Bruce, honey, how are you feeling? And he didn't say, I feel like a woman. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Every day he didn't do that. He told a lie. So you have to look at the character of the person. Is this type of character worthy of some award of bravery and excellence? No. Well, here's no. the thing. He overcame all of that deception and he finally said, let me he live in my truth. And let me acknowledge that. And let me, that. And and, 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 well, let me acknowledge that in public. Here was a relevant quote that Caitlin made during her speech last night at the ESPY Awards. She said, it's been eye-opening, inspiring, but also frightening. All across this country, right now, at, across the world, at this very moment, there are young people coming to terms with being transgender. They're learning that they're different, and they're trying to figure out how to handle that on top of every other problem that a teenager has. So, who wrote that? Who wrote that? First of all, people. people These are kill Caitlin's me. words. Those, are, those, are that, those came out of Caitlin's mouth, but that don't mean Caitlin put them down on paper. All I'm saying, I'm not taking anything away from her story, but all I'm saying is when you're able to go from making, let's say, twenty-five or thirty-five thousand dollars an episode to five million dollars for a docu series, and you're able to do this and you're able to pull this kind of money, it can make people tend to like. It gave to me. It was an incentive. If, if people do this without incentive and they do it for the right reasons, I know people who transition who never really fully transition because they're stuck in a doorway because of financial reasons or because they're homeless. All I'm saying is when you want to tell me somebody's brave, there needs to be a story behind the bravery, not that you're hiding around in, your, in, in some glamorous mansion. I'm not saying that money took anything away from Caitlin's story either. But all I'm saying is when you're able to do your full transition in two weeks, you don't have the same battles that a lot of these girls are facing. You just don't have it. And these girls and, are and, facing and, and real Caitlin battles. And Caitlin acknowledged that in her speech last night. She said there have been so many people that have traveled this road before me. From in sports, Renee Richards to Chaz Bono to Laverne Cox, many others, Janet Mock. Uh, I mean, I can acknowledge the trans people that I know that have struggled and suffered and persevered. And she did say that the transition has been harder on her than anything. And to do it again in the public spotlight. Think about this, though. She can use that spotlight as a bully platform. And I hope she does. I hope she uses this platform to help less fortunate people and to help the trans community and the LGBT community because now that she's dating women, she's a lesbian. So I hope she does something great for our community and that she's an advocate and an ally. And that's what I'm hoping for Caitlyn Jenner. Well, I'll tell you, you know, this is an issue that is not going to um, find a quiet easy pat resolution anytime soon but trans people are in the public mind in the forefront of the public consciousness and again it can only be to the good that the public discourse is encouraged by the visibility of people like not only Caitlyn stop but saying Caitlyn Caitlyn just got into the spotlight you had girls in this spotlight long before Laverne was gra gracing the covers of major magazines yes. before Caitlyn you have so many girls and so many trans people who have been in the trenches and have done the work now you have this one trans woman who comes out now all of a sudden she's a reason for everything like she's a transgender messiah no she is not she's one girl on a big 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 stage full of a whole bunch of other girls yeah, I don't, there's I don't, so many people I don't think she should before. be characterized as the trans messiah but the way you're saying well Caitlyn's position she's gonna do this and that she ain't done a damn sorry god forgive me she hasn't done anything yet that i find notable and this this all will come this will be revealed later on when we see what she does with this platform well i'll tell you what everybody you can join the discussion after the break Give us a call, 410-702-5667, and ask 410-702-5667 to curse me out. 
<laughs> ask Nathan, ask Tammy after the break right here on Talking Tea with Tammy and Nathan on BeExposedRadio.com. Sorry. Unfortunately, this was only a snippet of the show. Please catch the full show every Thursday at 6 p.m. on BeExposedRadio.com.